All right, welcome back to that's the wrong pen. Welcome back to section four of the Scrape the Planet course. On the last video, we talked about um, our IMDb spider, and we dev'd it out. We got it working somewhat. Um, took us a while. There were a couple of weird bugs um, that I kind of debugged off screen, but we got at least to a working um, point before we ended the video. This video, we're going to talk about some of things, some of the things that were wrong with it, and we're going to talk about possible improvements and just general ways of thinking about spiders that are going to help you um, kind of evolve the spiders that you might build in the future. So. One of the biggest things that we're going to talk about is caching, and that's a fairly obvious, very quick, and um, very like impactful improvement that we can make on our spider. Caching, in this sense, is not just storing the data that we spider off of the site, but also referencing our local cache of that data instead of scraping it every single time. Um, and the reason why we're talking about this is we're talking about bottlenecks in our software. So bottlenecks. Bottlenecks are essentially anywhere in your software where the function or the, the method or the algorithm that you're using has a pretty significant impact on performance. So in this case, our biggest bottleneck is going to be requests, external requests specifically. Well external requests. So that's our biggest bottleneck. Anytime we reach out to the web server, there is going to be a lag from the request to our eventual response. There's also going to be an added period of time where we wait so that we don't send tons and tons of requests to the web server. I implemented those waits off screen, forgot to do it while I was on screen, totally my bad and like obviously broke my own rules, um, so not great. But that's going to be our, our biggest bottleneck, and you can actually see that if you um, kind of build in some diagnostic um, statements like printing out how long on average you, sh you, you, you actually spend in each individual function, and you'll probably, you'll almost definitely see that the largest time spend functions are going to be the ones where you make requests to external servers. So how do we fix this? Well, first off, we need to minimize those external requests. So am I making requests to grab data too many times? So do I already have that data initialized and I'm just not using it and I'm, I'm going out to refetch that data um, online? This actually happens fairly often. I think I did it once or twice in, you know, in the spider that we're talking about here. Um, I also can't spell minimize. Minimize. I knew there was something missing there. Minimize. Um, requests. So that's the first thing that you can do is go through, look and see, okay, I'm making a request, for example, for the list of movies. Do I already have that list and I just didn't realize that I already had it? I'm making a request for the actor's link page. Do I already have the actor's link? Can I grab that from somewhere else in my code? Can I restructure my code in a way where I don't have to make that extra request. Because with spiders, you're making hundreds or thousands of requests within the, the runtime of the spider, sometimes millions if you're building out a really big one. So if in your main loop for your spider, if in, in your main like logic for your spider, if you've got one too many requests, well, you're making potentially hundreds, thousands, millions of requests just because of that one spot, that one place that can be made more efficient that can lead to like potentially hours of more runtime gathering data that you don't really need or that you can grab from somewhere else. So the first one is minimizing requests. And if you can't minimize those requests, then resort to local cache. And this one is huge. This can save you tons of time. So we've got our back end here. We're just going to say that looks like a server and this is our back end we've got our spider spiders have eight legs and I'm just making six there we go so you've got our spider 
and we've got the internet. So obviously the spider is crawling the internet, bringing back the responses, and storing them in the back end. And it's repeating this hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. Now here's the problem. There's going to frequently be cases that come up where we get a second piece of data. Let's say we've got movie one, one and movie two. And we're going to eventually scrape both of these and they have an actor list. One, actor, two, actor, three, and actor two. So as you can see, there is a shared actor here that is in both movies. Now, if we're scraping through this and, and, and we're spidering these movies, we gather movie one, and we store actor one in the back end, and we store actor two in the back end. And then we come up to movie two. We store actor three in the back end, and then we see actor two. Now, we've already got all of actor two's data scraped. We already have it in our back end. So it is much, much smarter for us to go ahead and implement a check, see if we've already gathered the information for actor two. And then if we have, then we're going to not ever go back out to the internet and scrape for that data. We're just going to grab the local cache because this stuff isn't going to change super frequently. If we were talking about stock data, then sure, you'll want the most up-to-date information possible scraped from the web for, or, or from your, your source. Since we're talking about actor data, chances are that local cache, at least for a fairly long period of time, is going to be accurate and up-to-date. So we want to go ahead and grab the actor two data from the cache and use that instead of reaching out. The more we can do that, the faster this is going to be. Because currently right now, I've, I've got it set up to where my local cache is on a virtual machine that is on the same host that I'm running the code on. So the time it takes to make a request from my host machine to this VM is very, very, very quick, much faster than making that request to the web page. And then once I grab that web page, I'm going to have to parse it for the data that I want. So that's obviously not what, like that's gonna take way, way longer. We were talking, I think on a couple of the requests I saw, they were taking anywhere from one to three seconds per request. Whereas if we're grabbing the data from the back end itself, it's gonna be much faster than that. And I know one to three seconds, that doesn't sound that much. That's also one to three seconds plus the sleep time that you're going to have to code in in order to avoid sending tons of requests to the web server. So you're talking about, you know, five, six, seven, you know, seconds per request that, you know, you're basically just going to be waiting, doing nothing. Um, since this is a single threaded program that we're writing right now, um, you're essentially going to be doing nothing in that meantime. Whereas if we grab the local cache, we spend like a quarter of a second grabbing it and it's already parsed out. We don't have to spend any time parsing it. And since it's our own infrastructure, and because you know there's there's a very very low amount of traffic that we're dealing with with that, um, you don't have to implement that wait time. So we're literally talking about a quarter of a second versus seven seconds per you know loop. Um, so that's a it's an extreme improvement that we can actually make very very easily. We're already storing that data in the back end, so that part is already happening. We just need the part where it reads from the back end at the right spot. Um, you know, to, to implement the, the correct like local cache check essentially. Um, so that's our biggest bottleneck that we're going to improve in the next video. Let's talk about a couple of others. Sometimes you're dealing with scoping problems. We talked about that earlier. Scoping is absolutely key. When I was writing these, um, these scrapers for Chinese social media, I had to figure out a very unique way of limiting my scope. I limited my scope to just a couple of different subtopics, basically like sub um, subreddits on Reddit. I limited myself to just those specific topics and I was able to scrape way faster because of that. I started implementing things like multi-threading and you know, I was also having to hop through a bunch of different proxies in order to avoid getting IP banned, all of that fun stuff. So there were bottlenecks that came with that and there were improvements that, that came with that. But that scope is, is probably the most important thing. Otherwise, you're just scraping tons and tons of data that you're probably not going to actually need. Now, one of the last things that we'll talk about um, with respect to this, and it, it does have a pretty heavy overlap with this local caching idea, is choosing your root node. So 
with the test that I did, I went on, I can't remember the name of the website. It's like Oracle of Bacon or something like that, I think. And basically it's a site that's going to give you a bacon number. Um, so the, the amount of hops in between a, an individual actor and Kevin Bacon. And I wanted to test it by picking actors that had very small bacon numbers so that I wouldn't have to do tons and tons of searching in order to get to that bacon number, that level of depth in order to find that connection. Um, so choosing your root node early on is incredibly important. And another really, really vital part of the local caching thing is that as time goes on and you gather more data, your spider is actually going to get faster, not slower, because more and more of the actors and more and more of the movies are going to be in the local cache instead of um, you know you having to go reach out for them. So you're actually going to speed up your spider that way so you can start looking at those root nodes that are a little bit further out, root nodes that are at you know level three, level four, level five depth away from Kevin Bacon or whoever you choose as your target um, actor. The big part of it is the local caching, and that's going to be what we implement in the next video. We're going to implement the local cache read, um, since we've already worked on the local cache write. Um, so we'll go through that in the next video. Um, I appreciate you sticking through this whiteboard, and um, you know I, I think it's going to help a whole lot in the next episode, kind of understanding the improvements that we're going to make.